is Richmond Park. And it's one of my favourite places, which is hardly surprising because it's an extraordinary place. A complex community of animals and plants, dominated in fact by the largest land-living mammals in the country, deer. This park would never be here if it wasn't for deer. It was actually formed as a hunting ground for Charles I. I've got red stags and red hinds, which are females. And I've got fallow, which are does and bucks. For almost 400 years, deer have been at the very heart of Richmond Park. Many of the park buildings were built for purposes related to the deer. Here we have White Lodge, which was built as a hunting lodge, now home to the Royal Ballet School. Over the centuries, the deer have had a tough time. They were hunted by the nobility, poached by the populace. They have survived an outbreak of rabies, avoided foot and mouth. It really is quite remarkable that they are still here today. Our collection of heritage material helps us to understand the past and to inform future decisions to preserve the deer. We've got a look about them, a regal look, very prehistoric. They haven't changed for thousands of years. Deer cast their antlers in February. It's a bit like you and your fingernails. It's skeletal and they spend five months so they get to August and then they go into what's called fraying. It's where the blood circulation is cut off and the velvet splits and starts to fray. That's that time when you see them bashing their heads in bushes to try and get the dead flesh off. And then come following February they cast their antlers again and hopefully the antlers get bigger and better every year. Then when it comes to rut time, it's a game of push and shove with the stags and the bucks. You have to fight for the females. There's two times in the year when you don't want to be too close to the deer. And that is October when they're in the rut, because they're all fired up. And also in June, when the females are giving birth. Uh, a lot of people say, well, I didn't see a baby. Well, you might not, but mum knows where he is, and if you approach with a dog, a dog's a dog, and it will attack if you get too close. So the deer are largely the architects of the habitat we're in now, which is this wonderful acid grassland. It's their browsing pressure where they've stopped it reverting to woodland by eating away all the woody vegetation, and that has created this grassland where no particular grass can dominate. And in amongst it, if you look closely, you can find lots of small plants and flowers that can survive without being suppressed by dominant grasses, which is a very unusual habitat to find nowadays in England. Occasionally I'm asked about the browse line, as we call it in the park, and whether we've been pruning the trees, but it's actually the deer do this work for us. They're constantly walking around, nibbling away on the, the low-hanging branches. And this creates this distinctive flat bottom that creates a line right across the landscape. They're curious of other things they find in the park, such as litter, and they'll readily eat a crisp packet or a piece of string that they'll find discarded in the park. And unfortunately, these can get stuck in their guts, and ultimately they can starve to death. And so it's just one of those extra reasons why we really don't like people littering in Richmond Park. For centuries the deer have been fed by the park rangers. Now the deer are fed at night by the wildlife officers so that the deer can eat undisturbed. We supplement to feed to the deer in November, beginning of December, and we feed every night right the way through to April. It's just a supplement. They still have to go off and forage but it gives them their daily quota of minerals, proteins, fibres, vitamins, 
and specifically selenium and copper, which this park is lacking in. I can't think of any other national park in any other country that sits almost on the capital city that has wild deer roaming around in it. We can all work together to ensure the safety of the deer. I've enjoyed this marvellous place for over 60 years and I hope it will remain as wonderful as it is now for a very long time to come.